Currently, we're in Lafayette, Indiana. We're about 45 minutes north of Indianapolis. This is Greenbush Street. Back in August of 2020 at this Domino's Pizza, one of their employees, delivery drivers, 137-year-old Joshua Ungersma, worked right at this very Domino's Pizza. At that time, he was 37 years of age and he just had a baby about six months ago. Now, this was his second job right here. It says online that he worked as a meat cutter at a supermarket called Payless. Now, in this very shopping center, right behind me, is a Payless supermarket. Now, I, I don't know if it's this exact one that he worked at because there's a couple of these in the area, but this man working two jobs 60 hours a week to provide not only for his brand new baby but also for his stepchild uh, he had a relationship with jenny ungersma and they had not been married very long at the time and as some of you guys know out there if you've ever done the kind of job like i have where you're delivering food you're delivering pizza uh for so many years it has always been this uh weird myth that these pizza delivery drivers carry all kinds of money and if you just you know stick one of them up stick a gun right in his face he'll give you five hundred dollars and that could be the furthest thing from the truth pizza delivery drivers never carry much cash on them because when they go out for deliveries they might drop two or three different uh pizzas at different locations so the most they're going to have if the person doesn't use a credit card is about 50 to 60 bucks on them august 31st 2020 Domino's gets an order for a couple pizzas uh, to a location, I believe it was over uh, somewhere on 16th Street. And so with that, he gets the order, he throws it in his car, and he proceeds to the location to do what he always does at this place, deliver a pizza. Joshua comes right down this street and makes a left onto Hart. The address that he's looking for is on the 1900 block of 16th Street. It was placed by a woman named Rebecca. And as he's coming here, it's around 11 o'clock at night. Everything is dark, but it's only a mile away. And uh, this is just going to be another routine delivery. But uh, this was absolutely no routine delivery because what... Joshua didn't know was that this was a setup for a robbery. The girl that placed the call, her real name was not Rebecca. Her name was Jalen Billups, and she was 17 years of age. And her boyfriend, Alberto Van Meter, was waiting at an abandoned home with a 9mm Glock pistol because this was intended on being simply a robbery. Nothing more, nothing less. You think that this pizza delivery driver is going to come and he's going to have a pocket full of cash and you're going to relieve that cash from him. But uh, what Alberto didn't know was that there's plenty of other people in the world that carry guns. He's not the only one. So he comes to this street right here, which is where we're at, 16th and Hart and it would be one of these homes right here at the time that was abandoned which is where he came to deliver the pizza now when he gets out of his vehicle uh he's approached by alberto with his gun drawn telling him that uh, this is a robbery well joshua always carried a gun on him because pizza delivery is a very dangerous business and so he pulls out i believe it was a revolver out of his pocket and fires at alberto striking him a couple times and he falls on the ground drops his gun and immediately according to a neighbor uh joshua now is basically freaking out because now he just shot somebody and they try to rob him and somebody yells out hey do you need any help he says yeah call 911 uh, this guy tried to rob me and as he's kind of looking at uh, Alberto on the ground, the person that made the call 
one uh, 17 year old at the time, Jalen Billups, she picks up her boyfriend's gun and points it at Joshua, striking him uh, a couple times, uh, thus killing him. She took her boyfriend's gun as he was wounded on the ground and fired it uh, into Joshua Ungersma. By the time uh, paramedics came to the scene and took both men to the hospital, uh, they would both end up dying from their injuries. Now, as soon as the police came by, she has the gun still in her hand and they tell her to drop the gun. So she drops the gun and she immediately says, they both shot each other. Well, that was a lie. They didn't both shoot each other. Joshua shot Alberto in self-defense and then you picked up his gun and killed Joshua Ungersma. Now, of course, after the eyewitness to the murder was interviewed by the police and a forensic uh, autopsy was done on both men, it was quickly uh, theorized by absolute nothing but proof from the bullets retrieved by uh, both men's bodies that what ended up happening was that Joshua shot Alberto in self-defense and that he had a gun on him and that Jalen Billups came out and picked up her dying boyfriend's gun and murdered uh, Joshua in cold blood. Now, of course, you have many uh, laws in different states around the nation which clearly state that if you are going to commit a crime and in the process of that crime somebody dies you're going to be charged with that murder so not only was she charged with murdering joshua she's also charged in the death of her boyfriend so she's now charged with two counts of murder and it would take a little while for the uh, trial to proceed and uh, she eventually was found guilty of said crimes and she was sentenced to 45 years in prison and there was a five-year enhancement on the gun charge so this girl 17 years old turning 18 in jail now is going to be spending uh, the rest of her adult life uh, well into probably her her 60s um, behind bars unless she can keep up a satisfactory uh, record in prison now this story was already kind of odd in itself in terms of what happened and uh, you know you gotta you gotta ask yourself okay you got a kid who thinks that it's wise to rob pizza delivery drivers he thinks he's the only one he thinks he's big man on campus because he's, the, he's toting a gun and uh, you know he definitely got a case of uh, well, he got a case of a FAFO. And you have this girl who could have simply walked away. She could have screamed and, you know, whatever, and but she didn't have to pick up that gun and, and murder that man in cold blood. And you gotta, you gotta think to yourself, well, what kind of family does this girl come from? And well, the family definitely showed their true colors because uh, during the court proceedings, you know, there'll, there'll be a sign in courts, right? When you go to court. Unfortunately, I know because I've been arrested a few times, but uh, you'll have a, a sign that says uh, no cell phones allowed. So you've got to put your cell phone on, off, excuse me, airplane mode and and uh, proceed. So um, these clowns, her family, this totally shows you what kind of family that she has. Uh, they start uh, live streaming the uh, court, the jury. Uh, they start taking pictures, taking video. And uh, one of the bailiffs uh, sees what they're doing and they, get, they got kicked out of the court. And while they're getting kicked out of the court, they of course start uh, throwing uh, racial slurs at the juries, the jury members, and uh, sending uh, veiled threats. So their, their, their family member, what's up there? Their family member, of course, now you can see that your family member is in jail for this man's murder. And then they have the nerve, because it's nobody's fault but her own, and then they got the nerve to act like that in court. Uncivilized people.
uh, that's all there is to it, just a bunch of uncivilized Cretans. So that really just shows you what kind of family she came from. You know, this, you know, I know, I know kids do stupid things, trust me. I know. But that, that girl, I don't know about that kid, I don't know about the robber, but uh, he's no longer here. So he paid the uh, ultimate uh, crime, uh, sacrifice, or whatever you want to call it. He, he paid the ultimate uh, penalty for uh, his uh, bad mistake. But that girl, you can just totally see uh, what kind of family she comes from. She never had a chance. She never had a chance just by how her family acted in court. It's rather pathetic and sad, and I feel terrible for uh, Joshua's wife and his uh, step stepkid and his new baby. Gonna grow up never knowing your father. And uh, it got so bad out here for his wife that uh, she ended up moving out of Indiana because uh, she was getting uh, threats from unknown persons. But I'm pretty sure we could figure out who was responsible for those threats. So, um, the Domino's Pizza where he worked at, uh, they ended up uh, doing a GoFundMe. Uh, they did like a Friday night fundraiser where they donated 75% of all the profits of all the sales of uh, food and what have you from that uh, location to uh, his family. And uh, they are no longer here. I don't know where they live and starting off, starting a new life with a, a, a baby and uh, just because of uh, two knuckleheads, you know, very sad, killed that guy for no reason. And obviously they had no parental guidance to explain to your kids, don't rob pizza delivery drivers. First of all, robbery and stealing for people is wrong. And number two, they don't carry that much money. So because of that, you have uh, two people dead and one who ruined her entire life. Now she'll uh, she'll file her appeals, and uh, you know, who's not to say that she'll get some kind of a, a reduced sentence in her in her prison term? I have no idea, but uh, I don't know. That's it. All right, guys, I'm out of here. I will catch up with you on the next uh, video. Have a good one. Peace out.